on who believes in me or what I believe or don't believe. Whoa. And then the Mars comes up 2013, hits the Mercury. Okay, so as the Mars hits the Mercury, this is a Libra, Taurus, Moon, Aries, rising, very active person, but most of the planets are setting, reacting. But she's a very sociable person, always, always busy, very successful business person, and um, but has had is has had a second marriage, and still in touch with the kids. But she started Mars went over Mercury, and probably about the time I met her, she started studying astrology. She just had been driving past my place so much time. One day she saw my sign and just stopped, and knocked on the door and came in, and we started talking, and we've been friends and close ever since. She went through all the classes, gone through everything, and um, started acting on her ideas, doing what she was wanting to do. It wasn't just about astrology, it was about changing countries, it was having, doing, making things work the way she wants to make it work. So Mars is often tied to your work, to what you're doing. And strong ideas came in in 2013, or really from 2011 or 2010, all the way up through this whole period. And, that, and she's building up, it comes up and conjuncts her Saturn in 2039. It's the seventh house, it's the seventh house of her whole lifetime. And in 46, it would, 46, I think, it squares Jupiter. Yeah, in 46, it'll oppose the moon. And then it conjuncts Saturn in 39, opposes the moon in 46 squares Jupiter in 47. So it's going to move through this T-square, Saturn, Pluto, to the moon. So that's to do with kids, grandkids, where am I, what I'm doing, where am I settling, what I'm doing, that's coming up. That's a long way away yet. Yeah, she's in this phase now with her Mars in the seventh house, doing things in a relationship and, and traveling a lot and um, doing a lot of the things she wanted to do. You can't tell her she's not going to do that. There she is. Okay. Um, there might be struggles around. Kid. She's in a second relationship, so there might be struggles with kids from the first relationship or whatever that just weigh on her energy. But it's nothing that's disrupting her. Not, the Mars is not being interfered with in this time at all. Okay. I still got a bunch to go through, so I'm going to just keep going here. We don't have any really pathetically de uh, devastating charts in the class. So I wouldn't expect that. Um, with astrology, you get a session when things are really devastating. You take the class usually after or before in preparation or after before a big thing comes up. But this is about energy and work. So this was just a close up of it. I'll just put it there so you can get a screenshot of it. Okay. So, we have, we're, I'm working with this chart now, with this one. You should be able to have this. This is the main, you have this done, you got it, so you come back and look at it anytime. But once you looked at it, then you should have your graph with the star chart. We can come and look at the star chart and watch everything is moving by stars. It's much more detailed factor. Or you work with the printout. But even the printout doesn't give you the stars. So there's always there's something else going on or something. What else? What, and, and, and the curiosity pulls you in deeper. Okay, so here we go, number eight. Time. Yeah, okay, another long class. Um, but it took a long time to get here. So we have um, February 17th, 79. We have the Sun conjunct Mars. And the Mars here just goes direct, goes direct, goes direct. So it's going through Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus. It's got four signs that's going to touch across a lifetime, if he lives that long. So here, the Mars starts in the fifth house. His Mars is in the fifth house. Squared Uranus conjunct his sun. So it's powerful pride. I got to do what I got to do, but it's volatile. It's disruptive. So a lot of big things build up and then fall apart because the Uranus squares it. It's high strung, a little accident prone. Hard to be consistent, even though there's all fixed signs that he could do things and people fall away. like. Um, yeah, so in any case, um, 
it's uh, his Mars is afflicted to begin with. It pushes the Mars. He is very powerful in what he wants to do, very strong and assertive in what he's going to do. But it's square Uranus, so it, it, it tends people tend to let him down or tends to disrupt his Mars. So in his natal chart, his um, I mean I think he's a musician or performer had a band, but how much can you do, and how stable is your income that that Uranus from the second house comes in there. His Mercury is opposed Saturn. That's a good for listening. It's a cautious thing for measuring music for listening. It's in Pisces, certainly mystical approach. But the Sun Mars going over the Sun, he grew up. It's from 79 to 87. In 87, it conjuncted his Sun. So like he's eight years old, eight nine years old. He's really gonna get a lot of encouragement. He's doing what he's doing. He's proud. He's he's got his energy. He's like the the, the kid that's the apple of the parents' eyes, so to speak. It's like. The, it's dramatically there. Then it goes up ahead into Pisces, and then it goes up into, it gets, the first one's going to conjunct, the Mars is going to go along and conjunct his Mercury. So his strongness is going to get further strong. His own ideas are going to be strengthened in 95. I got to do this. I'm going to do this. His Mercury's in Pisces, the Mars in Pisces. It's not, it's in the sixth house. What do I want to work? He's not going to want to work at the most practical thing to travel, do something adventure, do something dreamy, maybe have the band, maybe do something. But there's, there's this, um, his Mars is conjuncting the Mercury. It's being ruled by Jupiter because Jupiter rules the Pisces. And it's Jupiter squaring the moon. So he's thinking about what he wants to do. It may be opposing parental wishes or opposing what parents think he should be doing or whatever. There could be different agendas there that's a little complicated being Pisces. But the Mars goes through that in 95. In 2003, it comes up and it, may, and it squares I don't want to say in 2003, it opposes the Saturn. So it'll, it'll work. It, see, the Saturn is definitely just past the square. So Mercury opposes Saturn. So all his life, the Mercury, the caution, well, that's his Mercury. So the Mars comes up to hit the Mercury and hits that aspect and it works all the way through. It's still working on that aspect, the Mercury Saturn, till December 2003, when it hits the exact opposition to the Mercury. So he's going to be pushing things, but he's going to be feeling. He's pushing his ideas, but how much they're paying off or what they're doing, or how much support he is that Saturn at 12th house, there's a limitation coming into it that he runs into. Some delays, 2003, some pressure, some restrictions, but it's still pushing towards six house. I got to work at something. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? He's still supposed to be adding skills, adding or adjusting what he's doing. And because it's in Pisces, it's multiple choice. It's going to be doing, I'll do this and this, I have the band, I don't have this straight job, or I'll have these things, or I'll be traveling, or what, it'll move somewhat like that. Then it comes up and in, in 2015, it comes up and it's, and 2015 it squares Neptune. So then he's pushing, but he gets confused. He's not sure what, he's, he's absolutely sure in one way, and he's really gullible and confused in other ways. The so Neptune squares the Mars. So his actions aren't really, they could be fanatically clear to him, but really distorted in how he expresses this about. So this is kind of good for poetry or for writing or for doing things like, but it's it's not making his energy stronger. It's it's confusing, the it's complicating his actions. So he starts to doubt or question what he's doing, 2015. He's either pushing it because the Mars is pushing it, but there's a gullibility or confusion inside of how he's doing that. This builds up to 2023 in June, when it hits the Mars hits the descent and it comes from below the horizon. What am I doing? To how does it relate to others? I got to do things with others for others. Got to relate. I be out in the world more. Okay, so that starts in 23. So he's between the Neptune, being the Mars, and then um, it's coming up to the descendant. So if we just go look at this. Yeah, so there's the Neptune to the Mars 2015 that happened. And there's not really big aspects, but it, it squares the midheaven and opposes the ascendant. Then helps them both about the same time. That's in 2023. So that's three more years. Three, three four more years. Two, three, four more years. And it'll be on that for a while. The issue of who's in a relationship, who's not. There'll be a, poor, a push to be relationship, to not want to be alone. It's going above the horizon, and I'd be pushing for that. And a lot depends on who he connects with, what he does. This is about what you're doing and your attitude to doing things. So it's he's 
what are the trade-offs, what are the dependencies, what are the expectations being brought in by the center that's going, that's better than being alone and nobody cares. So that issue of the Mars coming below the horizon above, it's going to be tied up with doing things with other people more and more, more out of the outside of oneself than, out, than in, not getting oneself together for it, sixth house, but actually being involved more, making commitments more, and it goes up. It's not till in 47 it squares the Venus, issues and challenges around taste or what one wants, you're pushing for what you want, but there's some struggles around it. And then it goes up to 52. It, oh wait a sec, one, two, two, three, 45, hold on a second. 45 that squares the Venus, yep. Yeah. And then in uh, 52, it opposes the Pluto. So that's a harsher time in 52. How much can I do? How long can I do this? What am I doing? Where are we going? It's a harsher time. And it is in Aries, it's in the seventh. It could be tied up with relationships and strong demands being made one way or another. Maybe the mother-in-law moves in, or maybe the kids are growing up, or kids want to move back in, or whatever. Then by six, then it goes into the eighth house, and towards the end, of, in his 90s, it will oppose the moon and square the Jupiter. So is that a plus? You can't know exactly what you are, but you see the pattern, you see how it's going, and you begin to get a sense of the progression of what his Mars is going in his life. So when he's moving, when he's doing things in the world, with his Mars in the sixth house where it is now, and he's trying to work, he's trying to help, he's trying to figure things out, he's to get things together, and it's health related to, he's, is that Mars is working in that way inwardly, so anything that comes up that works with that is going to get extra charged. But if he has no work at something he doesn't want to do, that's going to be more difficult in the sixth house. So, okay. Okay, here's a, I'm going to go to sample nine. And sample nine is a very special thing going on in, in, in her chart. She's a Sun in Aquarius, first house, with a moon in Aries. I know what I'm doing, get out of my way. Okay, and the moon in Aries is a square Mars, so it's, you know, it's feisty. There's a competitive streak in here. And the Sun's, the Mercury squares Neptune, so there's a tendency not to, has the dreamy mind, but has confusions of being listened to or, yeah when it comes to authority or stuff. It's just that's the Neptune up in the 10th house. How do you live up to expectations? Or how do people live up to yours? But anyways, her Mars starts in Cancer. And it's retrograde to start with. It retrogrades back and then goes forward. It's in Cancer almost her whole life. But it will go across the descendant. So this is... Um, I still have the Venus on that chart. Okay, so I'm just going to down here to look at this a little more closely. And when we look at the effect, here's the printer that I found out some of the program I didn't know. Here's the program, it goes out, it's doing the chart each year, and then for each year, it does the chart and the birth date, and then interpolates and calculates. So it was at zero degrees cancer in 76. It retrograded back from 137 back to zero degrees. Then June 20, 77, 76, 77, so it's 20, well, zero degrees cancer, then it went into one, and went forward, it went right back to the edge of cancer. So I got suspicious of this. I just checked in the ephemeris, which is why it's useful to have ephemeris. This actually went a few seconds back into Gemini for these two years. So her Mars, her whole life is in cancer, but for two years, 1976 and 77, I exaggerated it here. It's in Gemini, it's stationary, retrograde, but just at the very stationary point, for those two years exact, it's in Gemini. It's a little bit more independent and free than any other time. So, yeah, so she's born in 61, 71, 76, so 16, um, 15, 16 years old. So she had a certain splurge of certain amount of freedom and independence, and that turned her life around. It turned the way the energy went around. And from then on, she was going on it. So she, it's only two years in this back into cancer. It's not a delay. It's in the, this, I made it exaggerated in this drawing. But it really, it's only that two years. It just sits there, just into Gemini. At the winter, at the summer solstice, the most independent time of the zodiac. So you know, that's a very independent Mars. I'm going to do this, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And 
just go back up for a second here.